Let's look at some ergonomic solutions on some Victorian era Highland officers' swords. Hey folks, Matt Easton here, Scholar Gladiator and Easton Antique Arms. And for anyone who doesn't realise, this is a basket-hilted broadsword known in the 19th century as a claymore. Yes, indeed, it's not a large two-handed sword as found in the 17th century, but it is what they called a claymore and the term claymore is problematic and complicated and a subject for another video. But basket-hilted broadswords, these were carried by Highland officers in the British Army in the 19th century still, and basket-hilted swords, of course, had been carried since the 16th century. They first appeared, ironically, the earliest evidence we've got is actually from England, not from Scotland, um, in the 16th century. We're looking at really the 1530s, 1540s, and indeed there is a basket-hilted sword which was found on the wreck of the Mary Rose, which sunk in 1545. Now, by the time we get to the um, 18th and 19th centuries, other European officers, for the most part, certainly by the year 1800, for the most part had switched to using various forms of um, sometimes spadroon, sometimes sabre, but essentially they'd moved away from basket-hilted swords by and large. There were some exceptions. Some heavy cavalry still used basket hilts, what we'd term basket hilts, but the types of Scottish, particularly Highland basket hilts, um, used in the British Army were confined pretty much by um, 1800 just to Highland infantry officers. So what are we talking about ergonomics here? Well simply how you grip the sword. Now I've spoken in the past about the limitations of basket hilts. Before I talk about the limitations I should of course first talk about the advantages of basket hilts and in a nutshell it's a huge amount of protection and indeed whilst this one might have uh, gaps in it they often had liners inside but the fundamental point is you've got a full basket around the hand, whereas a typical sabre of the time at best has what's called a half basket, and then something like a, a spadroon or certain types of light cavalry sabre only have a knuckle bow, um, so far, far less protection. In fact, if I just go to this slightly later, this is a George V era, but you'll get the idea, you'll see that this still has the liner inside it, uh, and this could be made of buff, le buff leather. This one is made of thin leather uh, with a felt red uh, covering on it. But some of them were actually quite thick leather, and indeed some of them don't fill the whole basket, some of them just fill half of it. So they're very, very protective um, to the hand, uh, but that comes at uh, several costs. Number one is a, a nuisance in wearing, and I've detailed all of these in previous videos, details to wearing. Another one is mass, weight, okay, it's a lot more weight on the weapon. The other one is um, it can be restrictive to the hand, and we'll come back to that in a minute. And another one is uh, simply that it can be uh, bigger and bulkier and might more likely get in the way uh, of, of other things, okay? And that kind of connects to wearing it. But coming back to the point of holding it, what's the fundamental problem with holding a basket hilt? Well, this varies slightly depending on the size of the basket, the length of the hilt, the style of the pommel, blah, 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 uh, various reasons. But fundamentally, if you're used to holding it like a sabre with the thumb up, you usually don't have space to in a basket hilt, although some do um, and therefore it makes it more difficult to align the point for a di direct uh, thrust or lunge, um, what well, well, thrust with a lunge rather. Um, so it can make thrusting a little bit more inconvenient for someone who's trained in for example small sword and spadroon methods which you can apply to sabre. Um, and additionally it does mean, now if we specifically come down to these two sidebars at the bottom here, it does mean that those two bars do, when you extend the sword fully out, will clash with the bottom of the hand to some extent. And this does arguably perhaps lead you to cutting in a star which is more similar to certain, for example, Viking era swords or indeed um, talwars and things like this, where you leave an angle between the blade and the sword. And again, I've talked about these in previous videos, so I'm not going to labour those points. But specifically in the Victorian era, we start to see concessions start to be made to baskets to enable someone to use them more how they were trained to use a sabre. And it should be mentioned that the same manuals were applied to these as were applied to sabre. There weren't separate manuals for basket hilts for Highland officers. There weren't enough of them to really warrant uh, that being uh, economical. Indeed, they were expected to use the exact same sabre method that you used sabres with. Now, 
Um, these sidebars start to go through an adaptation in the 19th century that we see, and we do occasionally see this earlier, and I've, I've shown earlier period tools that sometimes have this, and in fact something like a Schiavona uh, or a 1788 pattern heavy cavalry hilt gets around this by having these sidebars, instead of joining the pommel as is the Scottish fashion down here, they actually all converge at the front and join at the front. If that happens, you can now hold the sword like a sabre in something with the thumb up, more like a sort of almost a pistol grip, which you can't really do conveniently with this sword, but you will notice that these sidebars here don't can come in at 90 degrees, as earlier ones tend to do. And in, in fact, even if we go to an English mortuary hilted sword of the 17th century, then they tend to connect at the side at 90 degrees, and that prevents you extending the <laughs> side of the hand along the side of the pommel because it's blocked by that bar there. And you'll notice that these bars now are starting to come down at more of an angle. This is a Wilkin Wilkinson example from the 1850s. Now if I swap over to this other example, by uh, an unknown maker, uh, you will notice, if I just lift the tassel up, which is part of the, you will notice on this example, they've gone even further with it, and now the bars are connecting really quite near the front here. And that means that the side of the pommel, if I can just get it to focus, there we go, the side of the pommel there is now clear, which means indeed that I can start to hold this sword at an angle more like that because it's now got space for my hand to pass at the side of the pommel. So that's one solution and this is essentially a Victorian adaptation to make the Highland basket hilt more usable for people who were more used to using sabres for example or perhaps even spadroons. But there is another option as well, and now I've not had one of these before, and in fact this is, um, this is one that's been sold, uh, and it's just going off to its new customer, but I thought therefore I'd quickly use it for a video before it disappears. And if we just look at the back end of the sword, you will notice again that the bars are slightly angled away from the side of the pommel, but not that much. But in this case it doesn't need to be because, I hope you'll be able to see this on screen, look at the angle or cant of that hilt of that grip. The grip is now angled down and this is very much a feature of the Victorian era and we see this on certain Highland officer swords in the middle, specifically in the middle of the 19th century. And this angle is echoed in sabres of the of the period, okay, uh, and indeed early ones, G Georgian sabres as well. Now this enables us to do various things. One of those is indeed to get the angle uh, to get the angle of the the cut extending out, because now we've got the uh, canted grip, so we can now extend the blade fully out without having to have our hand fully down the side of the pommel. But it also therefore enables us to get the point online and deliver the point, deliver the thrust more easily. So coupled with these uh, changes and angles, very subtle changes and angles at the meeting of the pommel down here and with the added canted grip, which is not normal, and again I, I refer back to the Wilkin Wilkinson example which is of about the same date, and you'll notice that the pommel and the grip are fully in a straight line with the blade on this example, but on this example the pommel's off to the side because it's been deliberately curved in the tang just like a sabre to enable that, and it gives quite a different look to the sword, I think you'll agree. Now purists might absolutely hate this because it doesn't necessarily look like the older basket hilted swords that this is alluding to, but I personally love it. I absolutely love this canted forward grip. Um, coupled with the broadsword hilt, the basket hilt and the broadsword blade, um, and I think it le leads results into a very attractive looking sword. Anyway, I hope that's been mildly interesting to some of you, um, and congratulations to the customer who's picked that up because it's a fantastic sword that I very seriously considered keeping in my collection, but I bought and kept too many things recently and I can't keep them all unfortunately. Um, I hope that's been interesting, uh, check out the links below to uh, the website where I sell antique swords, but um, additionally to my other websites and stuff and hopefully this video has been interesting enough that I'll see you back on the channel again for another video soon. Cheers folks! Thanks for watching, we've got extra videos on Patreon, please give our Facebook a like and subscribe if you haven't already. Cheers folks!